Here's a look at a few of the stories coming up on VA News this week. The seventh living Afghanistan war hero receives the Medal of Honor. Former Navy flight surgeon and distinguished physician Thomas Russell can go anywhere for care. Why does he choose the San Francisco VA Medical Center? And how Bedford, Virginia became synonymous with D-Day in World War II. Hello, I'm Laura Sergat with the VHA Chief Business Office Purchase Care. And I'm Jose Yamas with the Office of Public Affairs. This is VA News. The latest hero to receive the country's highest recognition for courage and valor, the Medal of Honor, has a message to share about selfless service for our country and for those who serve. For his heroic actions in the war in Afghanistan, former Army Sergeant Kyle White received the Medal of Honor from President Obama on Tuesday, May 13th at the White House. Before and after the auspicious event, Sergeant White called for the country to leave no stone unturned in helping veterans and for veterans to use their benefits that they're guaranteed for their service. When Kyle walks into the office every day, people see a man in a suit headed to work, and that's how it should be. A proud veteran walking into his community, contributing his talents and skills to the progress of our nation. But Kyle will tell you that the transition to civilian life and dealing with the post-traumatic stress hasn't always been easy. More than six years later, he can still see the images and hear the sounds of that battle. Every day he wakes up thinking about his battle buddies. And if you look closely at that man in the suit on his way to work, you'll notice the piece of war that he carries with him tucked under his shirt sleeve, the stainless steel bracelet around his wrist etched with the names of his six fallen comrades who will always be with him. Their sacrifice their sacrifice motivates me, he says, to be the best I can be. Everything I do in my life is done to make them proud. You go from the military to civilian life, you go from, you know, you know your daily mission, you know what you're going to do. But when you go into civilian life, there's nobody telling you that anymore. So I kind of made my own mission. Like my next mission was a degree and then a job after that. And then, so if that's my mission, these are the steps I need to take to get there. And I just think that's kind of what set me up to succeed. You know, these benefits that you've earned, you know, you take advantage of them and get that degree. Because, you know, if, even if that's not something you see yourself doing, it's always nice, or you want to start your own business, it's always nice to have that degree to fall back on if things don't work out, you know. And then also just kind of, you know, with the PTS again, just kind of whatever I'm able to do to kind of realize, help people realize that it's that, that first step, you know, that individual service member, you know, getting, admitting, you know, that, hey, I need some, to go see somebody. Just getting that first step, that's what they need to do. And I'm hoping that I set some sort of good example that, hey, I did that so many years ago, and, you know, things turned out all right for me, so that they'll turn out right for you. See more of Sergeant White's interview, including his account of his actions on November 9, 2007, during an enemy ambush at www.va.gov and the social media blog Vantage Point at the address on the screen. On Monday, May 19th, a new social media site will debut on the VA.gov pages. It's called Explore, and it includes the stories about the lives of veterans before and after service. One of those veterans is a distinguished physician in the Navy in the Vietnam War, at VA, and in the private sector. Dr. Thomas Russell is retired now. He has brain cancer. He can get his care and rehab anywhere, but chooses a San Francisco VA Medical Center because he says there is no care any better. Here's some of Dr. Russell's story. My name is Dr. Thomas Russell. I served in the U.S. Naval Reserve as a flight surgeon during the Vietnam conflict and was assigned to the aircraft carrier USS Ticonderoga. Four years ago, I um, developed a fair amount of pain in my pelvis and was through a series of tests diagnosed with a disease called multiple myeloma. More recently I had some scans for various things and uh, they found that I had a, a, a brain tumor and uh, had to c consider my treatment options and uh, for a number of reasons uh, I decided to come to the VA for my care. 
I found out through a friend of mine who works at the VA Bob Owen that, that I would be eligible for VA care. I had known Dr. Russell because we had been residents at the same time. We uh, graduated from college, from medical school about the same time and were um, in the uh, service under the doctor draft that was existing during the Vietnam War. So I had known him after, after that period and before. And when he had a diagnosis in um, late 2010 of um, multiple myeloma, which has been associated with Agent Orange exposure, um, he spoke to me and I told him that by virtue of that, that he had an entitlement to come to the VA. The end of his care or his medications, which can be very expensive uh, for anyone with any income uh, for multiple myeloma or other um, uh, uh, serious conditions that may be associated with, with Agent Orange. There's no copay uh, for that. And so that was partly the thing that I gave to uh, uh, Tom was information. You can hear more from Dr. Russell and other veterans at the New Explorer webpage at the address on the screen. Friday, June 6, marks the 70th anniversary of D-Day, a crucial and necessary turning point in history that came at an enormous price. According to the National D-Day Memorial, 2,499 Americans were lost on Invasion Day. We honor their memory and of those who have since passed on, and we celebrate the lives of D-Day veterans still with a portion of the story of an American community where the events of June 6, 1944 still serve as an immense source of pride and remembrance. Today, all the men lost on D-Day are memorialized at the National D-Day Memorial in Bedford, Virginia. It's here because on D-Day, Bedford sustained the highest per capita loss of any community in the country. Those lost on that day live on in memory as the Bedford Boys. There were 35 Bedford boys who served in Company A of the 116th Infantry Regiment of the 29th Division. They would be the first uh, unit to go in on D-Day, 6.30 a.m. And out of those 35 Bedford boys, 19 were killed within about the first 15 minutes of the invasion. This was a tiny community in 1944. Everyone knew one another. You went to school together. You went to church together. My father was treasurer there, so we always went to church. Lucille Hoback Bogus was 15 when the terrible news arrived. And um, just as we were getting ready to go, um, the, uh, t someone knocked on the door and my father went to the door and they handed him a telegram. All over town, similar telegrams started pouring in. On Monday, we got the second telegram informing us that my brother Raymond Hoback had been, was missing in action. If further details or other information are received, you will be promptly notified. Lucille and her family would later learn that Raymond had also been killed on D-Day. Lucille keeps a small collection of photographs and letters from and about her brothers, and her memories remain strong. Eventually, a Bible would arrive at the Hoback home and that Bible had been picked up by a soldier who was walking the beach. Today that Bible is with Lucille, along with a letter from the soldier who sent it. I imagine what has happened is that your son dropped the book without notice. Most everybody who landed on the beach D-Day lost something. Uh, it was a really sad, sad day. This memorial is laid out to tell the story of the Normandy invasion. The arch is exactly 44 feet, six inches tall for the date of D-Day, June 6, 1944. Dedicated on June 6, 2001, Bedford's National D-Day Memorial aims to commemorate and educate. The memorial also features a tribute wall, displaying the name of every member of the invasion force who died on D-Day. In designing the wall, it was discovered that no complete list of those killed could be found. So this organization spent the next decade researching name by name every single soldier, sailor, airman, coast guardsman, merchant mariner who died on June 6, 1944. And those names are carefully placed on the wall that we have here at the monument. Hundreds of D-Day survivors have been invited to visit Bedford and the memorial to their heroism on June 6, 2014. With most of them 90 or above, it's likely to be the final major gathering of America's D-Day survivors. 
See the entire D-Day story at the VA YouTube address on the screen. If he can, VA public affairs photographer Robert Tertill goes to Normandy every year in conjunction with D-Day events. Robert says it has become part of who he is and always inspires him. Robert has already made one trip this year, just last month, for a huge Boy Scout encampment on the Normandy banks in conjunction with the 70th anniversary of D-Day. There were thousands of Boy Scouts there from the U.S. military facilities and countries all over Europe. Here's a quick look at Robert's photos. Nearly 4,700 American Boy and Girl Scouts took advantage of spring break to attend the tri-annual Camporee on Omaha Beach at St. Laurent Saumon in Normandy, France. It is the Transatlantic Council's seventh and recognized worldwide as the opening event for the upcoming 70th anniversary of D-Day landings at Normandy. Scouts came from the U.S., overseas military facilities, and U.S. embassies to participate in a weekend of remembrance, learning, and scout fun. Scouting's role as international messengers of peace was the inspirational theme. Rain met the scouts as they pitched camps, but the remainder of the weekend saw sun and trips along the coast of invasion sites and museums. 90-year-old World War II Army Air Force veteran Captain Samuel Wiley Hammersmith a B-25 pilot with 28 missions in the Pacific, mingled with scouts throughout the weekend. He and the scouts were the special guests as the christening of the new Freedom Bell in historic Bayou Cathedral. Part of the Camp Re activities was an Eagle Scout and Order of the Arrow swearing in on Omaha Beach, and a multimedia presentation with an Air Force flyover and performances by military and civilian choruses. Saturday night was finished off with a paella picnic and a fireworks display over Omaha Beach. To close the weekend of remembrance, there was a memorial program at Normandy American Cemetery, where scout troops laid wreaths at the magnificent bronze statue, the spirit of American youth rising from the waves. Robert is headed back to Normandy for the big 70th ceremony and promises to bring back another remembrance for our show in mid-June. Did you know? Monday, May 26th is Memorial Day. We know most of you do know, but we want to make sure to remind you to take the time to honor and pay tribute to more than a million men and women who have given their lives in service to our country. And be sure to take time to thank living veterans, too. On Sunday evening, May 25th, watch your local public broadcasting station for coverage of the 2014 celebration on the National Mall facing the west front of the U.S. Capitol. Here's a preview. Join us for the 25th anniversary of an American tradition, the National Memorial Day Concert. A time to pay tribute to all the men and women who have served our country and to honor their courage and sacrifice. Join me, Joe Mantegna, and me, Gary Sinise, with Diane Weist, Jackie Ivanko, Danielle Bradbury, Megan Hilty, the National Symphony Orchestra, and General Colin Powell. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. The National Memorial Day Concert, Sunday, May 25th, 8, 7 Central, only on PBS. That's all we have for this week's show. We're glad you can tune in to watch. I'm Laura Sergat. And I'm Jose Yamas. We want to take a quick moment to wish Laura the very best from all of us. She and her husband, who is also a VA employee, are moving to Florida. Hate to see you go, Laura. Thanks for everything you've done for us up here. But we're glad you're remaining with VA. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great week. <laughs>